I greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I pray for you that your heart will be filled with the light, will be flooded by his light, and all that you did not before, you conceive, you understand, you comprehend it in your heart, in your mind, and nothing will be hidden from you in the name of Jesus Christ. We bless the Lord once again for this opportunity. It is always a pleasure to share in his word, to hear from him what he thinks of us, what he wants to teach us. God is our Father. We are here not by mistake. We are here because he wanted us here. And we have to find out what he thinks about us. We're not a mistake. We are a blessing. We are God's dream. It doesn't matter what we think about ourselves. We discover in his word that we are his dream. And if we are to then understand this, our hearts and attitudes should be ready to listen, to hear from him. We keep on learning. You know, there's something called teachability index, the willingness to learn and the willingness to accept change. The willingness to learn is now that you open up your heart and you want to learn something. You see, we have to discover this. The day you stop learning, you stop growing. You cannot grow into something that you don't know. You cannot enjoy or experience something that you don't know. The most important thing is first, is to know first. And then the experience comes later. We want to experience things that we, don't, we know. And that means you will know where you're coming from and where you're going. And you know how to use that very thing because you have enough information and knowledge about it. We don't want to uh, just try and and wonder about, you know, without knowing where we're going or what we should do. But the Word of God, you know, especially in Christ Jesus, we find all these answers. And we are so sure and certain of where we are, where we are going, what is all this about? The beginning, the end, in this life and after this life. So we are so sure of many things that we can't find anywhere else. We are so assured in his word and we discover truth. Truth includes the knowledge of God and the knowledge of yourself. Once you know who God is, you discover who you are. This knowledge of who you are is the true message of truth and it's the true message of what jesus brought forth he came to teach us or reveal us who we who, our true identity and our true identity will always include or reveal us the love of god we discover that god loved us to the extent that he made space in himself to accommodate us now we have our place our home in him and he have his place in us If he has that place in us, it is then the most powerful thing you ever know. The mutual union, that union, that oneness beyond unity. It's not unity, it's oneness, oneness, union that is going to be permanent between you and God. And that's the most important thing you have to know and understand because it will not cease, it will not stop. It has no time. It is timeless. It is eternal as the Bible puts it. When we died with Jesus Christ, as we, we read in 2 Corinthians, in, uh, rather in Colossians, chapter 2, verse 12, buried with him in baptism, in which you also were raised with him. So, talking about baptism, we realize that baptism also meant something that has to do with circumcision. Circumcision and baptism means the same thing. 
Baptism means identification. That is the whole idea of baptism. It means you are baptized unto, to become something, to, to turn into something. So once one was baptized, it meant you have changed the identity. You now identified to somebody to whom you are baptized. It is always key to know that all these uh, terms and words are pointing unto something that we are in Christ today. The baptism means what? That we are baptized in the body of Christ. We are baptized in Him. In other words, we are identified with Him. Once you're baptized, means now you belong to Him because it's, it's a sign that you're saying, oh, I belong to Him. I now belong to Him. You are testifying, testing that you belong to Him. See? So baptism is identification. Circumcision is identification of our true identity. So, he says then that buried with him in baptism. So burying, when Jesus was buried, when Jesus went to grave, it means that we were also buried with him. And that meant it is baptism. It is also circumcision taking place. This is the true circumcision that God was speaking about in the sign that he gave the Jews. The Jews received the sign from him, the, the physical circumcision, and it meant they belong to him, they identify to him, they are separated from the world, they separated unto him, So, and it made them holy. Jesus Christ does it in a real way, in a, in a, in a very, uh, it's not, now this is not a sign, it is the reality of the sign. You see, the, the, the sign was pointing unto something greater than itself. So the reality is what Jesus is doing, baptizing us with him. In other words, he came to identify us with the Father in him. So today, so that we may say that I and my Father are one, you know, because I've been identified to him, I've been united, now I'm one with him. And that's the whole idea of in Christ. And by understanding our union with Christ, it will set me free from all fears, from all sins, from all failures, from all the past, from all, you know, connections I had before, things that were trying to pursue me or follow me or hunt me down. I am now safe in him. That is the meaning of in him. It is so powerful to discover that we don't end in burial. Rather, the story ends in resurrection, which you also were raised with him through faith in the working of God, who raised him from the dead. The working of God means the power of God. It is God who did it in his power because he used power to raise him from the dead. He's talking about resurrection. And the resurrection, again, like I said, it means a new life, a new beginning. Resurrection, for example, when you plant a seed and it dies in the soil, in the ground, and then it pushes forth and we see it uh, coming out, germinating on the earth again. You might call it resurrection, but resurrection means there is a new thing coming up. In the new uh, 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 clothing and the new style, it's a new. It's a new. If it is a person, it's a new person. If it is a plant, it's a new plant. So resurrection has to do with the newness of life. He says that we rose from him. He, God raised Jesus from, from the dead. And that is also a serious, a powerful statement. When you, resurrection is not an usual thing. Resurrection is not an ordinary thing. That you, you just walk and meet people who rose, you know, in the road or anywhere and you 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 still behave the same you run away if you discover someone 
rose, people tend even to fear those who, who rose. If uh, you have ever heard of the story of those stories of people who died and rose, so people will be scared because most people scared are scared uh, when they see dead people. No, leave alone the the one who died and rose. People won't. They were like, wait. So you mean you died and rose? So the rise, rising of the dead is one of the things that is strange to humanity. But this is also something very powerful. Because once the newness, the new you, the new beginning, if this new beginning is going to be so special and different, the resurrection is the sign that you know what there is no power more no more power of death you know if something rises if somebody rises it means he has defied death it means he has defied all the laws that suppresses him down it means it is against the natural it means it's beyond the ordinary this is not an it's not usual this is different so if it is true that we rose from the dead it means special men who are born special people who are coming forth a special breed that came from the dead you see <laughs> this is so powerful if you see someone that went through death and then rose, that means he went far. He passed death. He's now into something else. And what is that? Resurrection. He says that in Christ Jesus, the meaning of in Christ Jesus it is a person who passed death, who went and passed death. He's in another higher realm, and that realm is the realm of life, of resurrection. Resurrection means it was an, there, there was a need of power to cause the rotten man, to cause the, the missing life to have life again where life wasn't to to come in it means there is life jubilating over death life is has won at the end it is the celebration of life and power because resurrection is not ordinary so this is what happens and happened to those that are in Christ. He says, if you are in Christ, it means you pass death. You are alive, but your life is not an ordinary life. It's a life beyond what ordinary people know. It is called eternal life. In Christ, we have eternal life. In Christ, we have eternal life. We are in Him, and that means we have passed death. We are in eternal life. And that gives us authority and superiority over creation. Thank God, thank God for this truth of in Christ. Shalom, shalom.